state representatives and members of the Green Board are here. So, um, do you want to start, Mr. Mayor? Well, I suppose I could. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is a, a, a topic that has been uh, banded around now for um, a, a better part of a year, I would say. Um, and um, I, I will admit that I wasn't quite um, aware as to the um, kind of the uh, almost emergency, the essence of, of, of the need uh, for this uh, and, until more recently, uh, primarily from uh, speaking with um, Mr. Hennessy in the back of the room there, who has me on speed dial and um, uh, has been calling quite frequently, uh, which is which is absolutely fine. Um, but but um, you know we've we've kind of looked at at some options and and one of the things um, that uh, I've become aware of is that um, a lot of municip municipalities in this area are employing their own shellfish wardens, uh, constables, um, and they're aging out. Uh, they get to a point where um, they're no longer either wanting or able to do the job, and what that's uh, done is left a, a gap uh, in, in who's going to enforce that, and who's going to um, take on that responsibility. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that it's, it's never a problem, it's not a problem, until it is a problem, when all of a sudden it's no one there. And so, um, as we, we understand that, in conversation with Christine, the idea was, let's see what's the, what the need is uh, across our, our five uh, coastal communities, um, yeah, five coastal communities, um, that may have to be grappling with this, with this issue in the long run and see if there's any appetite to, to do something uh, through an, an MOU or, or something like that. And I, and I think, you know, if we look at it from the perspective of uh, kind of a short-term immediate need uh, versus a um, long-term fix, uh, that we, uh, I think we can collaboratively uh, come together and come up with a solution. Um, but I'm interested to hear what uh, other folks have to say or, or, or what your perspective is on this. I think um, uh, we can try to um, find that short-term solution I think it's going to uh, have more earnest discussion to get a longer term solution to this. So we really like to hear from all of you. You guys are the ones that are out there. Um, oh, is there any type of... As a point of order, if you are going to speak, please introduce yourself first. Hi, I'm Warren Swanson, Chairman of Community Resources and West Bad. Um, is there any type of coverage that we can have um, other than ourselves, which is obviously I don't want to get arrested, um, to cover our butts per se uh, out there when we're you know working um, temporarily. I mean, just I know the sheriff's department would come in if it was any type of violence, like a criminal act or something like that. Right. Correct. So what you're talking about is um, it, it is it already by engage with the. With the yeah, so that would be most productive. Okay. Um, I think, you know, that's what we're trying to do is find that short-term solution where uh, we meet the, the, the statutes, the requirements of the, of the state to enforce uh, municipal ordinances. Because Title 30A clearly states that state police and county sheriff's um, deputies cannot enforce municipal ordinances. That's right in state law. So uh, in order to do that, the workaround from that is to create either uh, uh, an MOU or some sort of an agreement, enter into an agreement with the municipality specifically to enforce their ordinances. And you can specifically name what those ordinances are, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, what's that name? Uh, a memorandum of understanding. Okay. It's an agreement. Okay. A contract. Ah, uh, Jason Kraft. Yeah. Good question, Jason. Okay. So it, it basically it's a contract. Okay. That you're allowed to uh, do those, but enforce those law. Correct. So as of right now, you cannot or are prohibited to 
enforcing our laws unless we have something like that in place. That is correct. Same thing. Well, that's correct. Okay. Hey. Way up in the back, please. Jeff Moore. Um, years ago, Joe, we, Joe, we used to have uh, Dale Brown and Fitzpatrick. It used to be a, a ward and then he went sheriff, I think. They, they used to do that a long time ago. I don't know if there was an agreement. It was still there in the books. Or or no. There is no agreement that I'm aware of. Um, but I remember they used to do it when they were deputies. Yeah, well, I know Mike worked for... Uh, Mike was a great show officer. He was, so, and then right. he was, yeah, and then he went share uh, for a little right. while. I wish Mark Nelson was here because he was chairman at the time. He knew what was going on. I just remember that, that Dale Brown was the first one. And then Fitzpatrick, when he became a deputy, yeah. he was doing it for a little while. Mr. Hennessy? David Hennessy. Joe, any luck with finding deputies who could do this part time, short term? Because the, the need is out there now. Yeah. So we did um, uh, over the past couple of days that kind of reach out to see if there's any interest that would want to take on the added responsibilities to do this. And, and we do actually have three or four deputies that would be willing to do this. So, what kind of time frame are you looking at? Because they have these. If they're sworn in as town constables, they can enforce the ordinance of West Bath. That, that is correct. I, I think most importantly, though, they can, their, their presence might stymie any sort of. Co correct, but okay. what's, the time, what's the time frame you're looking at? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think, David, it would be, um, uh, we would just have to come up with that MOU. We've got some what, model language that well, if, we could do. We could do that relatively quick, probably within a week's time. You know, the only thing I'll say is, my experience is you always want to give lawyers an opportunity to take a look at it. And, and that becomes the bottleneck, and that's what they slow down right there. But um, My point being, if you had a, a deputy who would do this, why can't the deputy sworn as a uh, town constable for West Bath why do you need that agreement at that, that point? He's not acting the sheriff's deputy, he's acting the town constable. Well, if, if you wanted to take on, I don't know if they would, I, I don't know how the, you know, compensation would work and, and those kinds of things. Um, you know, I think that's another element that we'd have to explore with them, find out just, just how that would be. Um, that makes it also more of a permanent well, no, the, the permanent solution would be to hire a second county marine warden. That's the permanent solution. The short term is to find a deputy or two who will fill in and come with the flats short term as a town constable, not as a deputy sheriff. Charles Moore, Fort Chandler, Harvester. If it was to be enforced, it wouldn't be enforced while they were in Sagadog. Uniformed, right? They'd have to get approved by DMR and be off duty. Well, otherwise they're going to have to get approved by DMR. That's a couple of things. They, they would have to. They have to be certified by DMR to enforce um, uh, certain aspects of the law. That is, that we know. Um, in terms of, of them wearing their uniform, you know, they're still uh, a deputy sheriff. So could they serve a, a dual role? Um, I think the answer is that yes, um, but not. It would have to be that way. So I think that's a that's a question we would need to maybe think through. Like said, uh, 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 most of the places where a, a police department or a sheriff's department enforces the shellfish ordinance, they're working as sheriff's deputies all the time. Uh, no, they're working for the sheriff's right. department the and, 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 and the municipality has that service. That magic happens. I'm not privy to that. But they are, when they are working, it's they are that sheriff's that deputies. That yeah. right. That's where the actual responsibility yeah. comes in. Right. Right. And, and that, that provides them with, you know, the um, support for the sheriff's department in case some incident happens. You know, things, oh, it makes things sense. along but those lines. Yeah. I just know how that works with the yeah. Yeah. But, but then you have workers' comp and all right. those other oh. things that would have to come into play. Hi, um, Allison Hepper, Woolly Select Board. Um, I have two questions, and you kind of touched on it. Um, is 
what's the cost involved? Because this is an extra service that the towns will be getting um, from the county. And also, would all of the town ordinance, uh, shellfish ordinances need to be the same? How that work? Uh, Clint, I have to defer to you on that latter question. I can answer the yeah. first. So, no, I mean, the, the state approves individual towns, shellfish ordinance. Some places allow you to dig at night, and some don't, or Sunday. You know, every, every town's a little bit different. So, if, if this did work out where there was a sheriff's deputy enforcing, that person would have to familiarize themselves with each individual town's uh, ordinance, um, which is that's not uncommon. You know, that happens, you know, all, all the time. Too. So they they won't be. They, you probably don't want them the same. I mean, right. folks have done what you wanted to for whatever reason you decided to, to do it. So. But there's probably a, safe to say much of the language is the same. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, con you have different conservation clothes. You, you probably all have a minimum size, and you have a two-inch minimum size in your ordinance. And, you know, it's pretty standard, except that night digging, Sundays, you know, yeah, those sorts of things, you know. So I think what Clint uh, alluded to, that if it was going to be multiple times, they would have to make themselves familiar with those. To, to answer your question, the way that would work would probably be uh, on a per diem basis, uh, and we would bill the, the individual town that they were working in uh, for the hours that they worked. And that, as you said, would include workers' comp and all that stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be worked out in the MOU. Okay. So, my question would be. Do we have to go up against the uh, budget committee in order to have the money invested to pay for this? No, I didn't feel that. Um, it would actually, in my experience of what I've seen in other communities who contract with the sheriff's department, um, the budget usually comes in less than what we would normally budget for our shellfish work. We have a line item for a Yeah, we have a line line item. item for it. It would actually be the same line item that we use to pay down. Okay, so it's we have already there. Money in the um, budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my other question would be who would contact if we had a conflict? Yeah, contact us. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's like kind of communications. I mean, if it's imminent, ongoing, it's 911. Um, otherwise, business line. I just think for the long term, I'd like to see the county have a Marine Warden Deputy Sheriff, which the county pays for. The five towns pay a lot of taxes too. And that's the service I would like to get as a full time warden who can also work as a deputy sheriff when he's not. Not when this hides in, when the ice is frozen, you know, the water's frozen over. They have the county actually have a Marine Warden Deputy Sheriff. You know, I think there's a lot of benefit in that because uh, one individual then gets to know all of the, all the diggers. Uh, we have uh, a number in uh, Woolwich and Warmers. I mean, I just saw a report today that came in where um, one of the Warmers was uh, reported a, a theft. And his um, uh, little robo uh, taken, but that's a big deal to him. Um, and um, it, there is benefits of having somebody that's really kind of immersed themselves in in with that community and knows who all of those workers are and and, and can work the whole co the, this whole Sagamore County coast coastline. Uh, Five towns, you know, eight, ten hours a piece instead of trying to get one guy a ten or twelve hours per town. It's not gonna happen. So that does make more sense. Uh, yeah, Dan Harrington, I'm with Bullwich. Um I, I um 
was trying to understand the agreement that you talked about that you need with these, that's all the towns. Would that have to be an agreement with each individual town, or would that towns have to come to an agreement with you as a whole? Well, that, that's, that's interesting, because one of the models that we looked at was a multi-town, Christine, you said one, but Dearborn, Scott, and Newcastle, and Newcastle yeah. uh, together. Um, but whether they're one town or single town, if, if it's more than one town, then it would just require signatures from each, from representatives of each community. If it's one town, individual contracts, it doesn't matter. So it's not, right. not a big difference. Right, right. So it, it could be done either way. Yes. yes. So, In Charles Moore, Georgetown. Yeah. I know in Georgetown, if we did something like this, it would have to wait until the following year's town hearing. And, and that's, they want to put everything through. And I, if we're signing contracts, it usually has to go through the whole town. It doesn't just go through one yeah. small group. So, can you tell me, you know, what, what the situation I It's my understanding that it's kind of an emerging situation here in West Bath. Um, we, we still have John Hanks, but he's. I know. I know. Yeah. And so are you seeing, I mean, are you seeing people from other towns? Or, but eventually it's going to happen. It's, it's just a matter of time. I mean, okay. right now our dating is not very great, so anybody who wants to come down, come on down, you won't want to stay very long. <laughs> yeah. But right. it's, uh, it's eventually going to happen. So, you know, it's, uh, yep. I'm interested in this, too, because yeah. we're going to need somebody. So, you know, I mean, I know you, you say that that's down the road and whatnot, but you'll be surprised how quick March and April come. And right, and then you start putting together warrants for your, for your town meeting. So, you know, as we're midway through August, now is really time to start planning these kinds of things. Start, uh, you know, seeing what the impact will be. Just to put you on the spot, Joe, um, in the short term, you'll be speaking to the deputies trying to work something out with West Bath? Yeah, I, I will. Um, and they can be sworn in as constables as soon as they can? Yeah, I, I think that the kind of the constable thing comes into play because we can't get anyone trained up, certified until the next uh, March, right? Right. So I, I'm looking at the regulation right now. Commissioner can grant a, a, um, a waiver, uh, and I'm, I'll vote on a little bit of a limb that he would probably be more likely to grant a waiver than a full-time certified body. Right, yeah. Um, so. 
Uh, especially if I, if I say Sam Harrington. Uh, the, another part that you folks might want to, like in the other towns, realize is that um, the um, training application deadline is February 1st, 2023. And um, for the new shellfish boards, the training is on in Belfast. It starts on the 29th of March. So, so is the February 1st, is it? February 1st is the yeah, application February. deadline. One, it's well, not every year either, is that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, I get a research. There's a research page every couple of years. Dan's had his hand up. I have, I have one more question. Okay. One more comment, I guess. Also, will you be talking to the uh, commissioners about this? Yes. Yeah, I'll have to. I mean, Charlie. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> well, if we're looking to try and get somebody certified, Yeah, I, I think we can, I think with the model that we've, we've got, we could probably uh, put together a draft uh, MOU for you folks to look at, for our commissioners to look at, and we could do something in a relatively, within you know, a couple of three weeks. I mean, at, 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 but we, there, there may be an opportunity to do something quicker, at least on the, uh, on, on the surface, I don't know about enforcing ordinances. We're talking about the difference between enforcing ordinances and maybe somebody finding out what's going on on the, on the, on the flats right now. Uh, I'm, I, I guess I want to get some. Okay. I can tell so, you exactly what's going on. My name is Tim Davis. Okay, can we go to the show? He's had his hand up for quite a while, so if we could just talk. I'll come back to you. I have spoken to the trap pretty extensively because we're in a dire situation as well. And what I found out from the department is that um, when you hire a warden, if they don't have the, the state's marine patrol training, they can go out and issue warnings. But where, if we were to contract with you because you are law enforcement, they can give you that waiver and you can actually write summonses. So it's, it's not an extensive process for them to do that, given that you guys are already current law enforcement. Tim, what's your last name? Harrington. Harrington. Dan. 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 I'm sorry. You're from Woolwich? Is that yes. Dan. 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 And you're Tim? Uh, Tim Davis. Okay. Do you want to? Okay. Go ahead, Dan. I was, I was basically, that was the same thing I was going to get on. That this is, and I don't know about everywhere else, but the town of West Bath, this is urgent. The sooner the better. I mean, okay. there's literally people in this room right now from out of town that are digging clams in our town that I'm from. Okay, this is, you know, everybody running around like there's no care in the world. It's not illegal right now. There's no town hall without a pretty town court. So that's how it is. Yeah. That's not poaching. Nice dice. The ordinance should stay intact as long as you're actively pursuing the ordinance. This is what it's come down to, though. And it's, it's getting serious. Again, one person at a time. Okay, Warren Swanson. <clears throat> I guess what we need to do is, uh, it would be nice if maybe you could contact Pittsburgh, Bullwich. We've yeah. already done that. That's yeah. what tonight is about. Yeah, and get them all on the same agenda. And <clears throat> I, I don't understand why we can't put that in paper. No, for this position. Joel is saying that he's going to get on it. He's yeah, I, I, I can have I I can have a draft MOU to Christine by uh, Monday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's gotten to the point where it's getting scary. Yeah. And oh, excuse me, one more. So when who who needs to get a hold of the DMR and get a tailwind? Or whatever for that. I guess I'll have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. If, that, if that's the if that's the method that you folks decide to do, the sheriff can uh, probably simply make a phone call. Okay. I'll, he can call me and I'll prep him with an email ahead of time. Ahead of time, I'll get him work. And uh, like I said, I, I can't speak for the commissioner. But I, 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 I can't I imagine, um, and I'm sure this has happened in, in, in other places where you have a 
full time certified law enforcement officer. This is really going to be because, as you know, shellfish wardens uh, in the state go from the guy that picks the short straw at the town meeting to a uh, full time police officer. You know. And they, they also go from the guy that picks the short straw at the town meeting who's really passionate about, you know, great resource conservation to the full time police officer that just does this because it's a uh, Monday through Friday day shift, you know. So you have all kinds of gambling. Right. So. right. Um, Did you have a candidate that's interested? Yes. And would some of that you think perhaps to consider a full time position that was made available to them? Interesting. Uh, right before I came up here, yeah, I was having a discussion with a supervisor. And I, I would have to talk with him, but um, he may very well be, you know. But I think that is, that is down the road. Well, what did you yeah. if, I mean, ideally, we morph into that same person who's starting, yeah. who's maybe starts in West Bath and then transitioned into other support towns. Okay. Yeah. So I'm hearing this is a short-term solution that you were really sounds like you're going to take. Yeah. Long term would be for the five towns to get who's going to take the lead. Would that be Christine? Would that be you? It would really be the sheriff's department at that point. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can approach yeah. the other towns, yeah. the, the board of selectmen, and, and attend the meeting and, and, and um, you know, present a case to them and see what gate they're interested in. And it, and it may require a, another. Um, a public meeting with representatives from public uh, communities. And I would be happy to help organize that. Yeah. It was helpful. One, one thing you folks ought to, ought to realize, sheriffs are going, you know, really kind of out on a limb here, because it's, it's hard enough to hire police officers anywhere, you know, anyway, and under any circumstance in this state. And then, then, then folks that have an interest or the capability to do, you know, great work, we, we get along, that's what, you know, we yeah. have, you know, so that's, you know, um, so, I mean, it's an uphill battle all, all around, and for him to vote on this sort of limb is, really it's quite, a, it's quite a big deal, really, you know. You're going to help the staff of the right? Yeah. I will help the sheriff's deputy, and, you well, know, and whatnot. Well, I always <coughs> have anyway, it's really not that big. No, Clint's been a, a great asset to us in, in a lot of ways, not just related to Marine Patrol, but to other matters, public safety matters as well. But one of the things I, I do want to say, I've, I've had some conversations with fellow police chiefs and sheriffs that have, that have employed full-time Marine wardens. Um, and, they, you know, what is, what some of the, 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 tell me what the good, bad, and everything else is. And, and, you know, they've all spoken very favorably that the communities support those positions. Hapswell has one. They have a full-time deputy. That, that's all they do. Uh, th they do a little more conservation. As does Brunswick. Brunswick really does a lot of conservation work around their flats and whatnot. So you know, the idea of having someone full-time really, you can begin to expand on that, and 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 it can be more than just enforcement. Yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> Brunswick, Hapswell, and Hanover have a lot more. Involved. So they actually hire people to do water testing um, in the conservation work and stuff like that. Um, basically, I run that program right? and I, well, I don't pay nothing. Right. I just do it because I, I feel that the people that maintain a license should have to put a little effort in to keep it. You know? So I just keep it up. And I will until, until I start but, paying But I know that, um, like in Hatch, the deputy comes to the uh, courthouse where they drop off the samples and the testing and whatnot. It's a rendezvous spot for the department where they have something to pick up. I couldn't even tell you who it's in the water. I dropped the tank off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
be I'll part of any memorandum of understanding that we have with the sheriff's office. Yeah. So Joel would come up with a program that he thinks will work for his department, right. and then the select board would review it. I think before we're done, could come to. we had a couple of towns that were all yeah. pitching in, but if, every, if he's right. going to end up doing all five, of course, all five can throw in then. But for the immediate, you know, the short term, I think West Bath. I think we can come up with something. Is there a woman behind you? Yeah. 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 Um, Angel Bryant. So, Clint, this is kind of for you. Um, where you're already in some of these towns, working as the state warden, would you have any interest in, because you're already out in like some of these areas? No, I have zero interest in it. <laughs> I, I, I can't, try. I'm not, I'm not authorized. So, Marine Patrol officers, we're authorized to enforce all laws of the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of in a parallel to what you folks are talking about, we're also authorized to enforce federal fisheries laws, but the federal government pays literally boatloads of money for us to do that. Okay. Right. So I can't enforce your what I think it's not allowed. I can't do it. So oh. um, you know what I what I do to do is if I obviously as a law enforcement officer if I see violations or whatnot I report it to the appropriate, you know, authorities or whatnot. Um, but yeah. And further furthermore, I you know, I have more than just Sagamon County town. If right. you look on my call log from a couple weeks ago, I handled in-person complaints in Biddeford and Booth Bay. So, oh, yeah. um, Kittery, yeah. Kittery, you know, so, you know, if you were expecting that sort of service from us, then that's not, that's not good. Well, I just figured you were, since you do kind of do, I try to, know, I try to hit, you know, this is one of my pri primary towns, but, you know, to say that I spend a tremendous amount of time here. As a matter of fact, most of the shellfish work that I do in West Bath is on the Meadows Lake or at, at, at the field. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more thing for me. <laughs> so that we don't ever end up in this again, shouldn't there be several people that are certified, even if they're not actively paid or whatever? If you can, I know it's jumping out to you, but I mean, through the state to be certified. Yearly, so that way if something happens, I mean, anything can happen in life. And then especially if this, you know, four or five towns hold together, if something happens to that person, that's five towns without a place. Good, great question, uh, Tim. And so my, uh, as I'm thinking through this, we would probably train up or uh, stand up a couple of people for that very reason. Share the responsibility, but depending on what shift they're on, I mean, there's a lot of other factors to yeah. take into consideration. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't mean, like, of course, they get paid for the time to go and do this right. certification and all that. But I mean, one of them can just be sitting. I or both. I act. I have no idea how uh, that stuff. Yeah, is going to be you know, Yeah. No, we can work that out. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Um, I know a couple of guys have mentioned the. the, the prospect of, of one person do, taking on the role, but I kind of like the idea of the Sheriff's Department having multiple people that are qualified for it, partly because, you know, they're going to be working different shifts, so it makes yeah. more sense not to have to call somebody in when they're on their shift. Well, you know, I mean, thinking down the road, if we ever did go to a collaborative uh, regional model, um, so I just could have a backup anyhow. So, yeah, you know, we would... I think we'd want to do that. Does this have budgetary implications for the county as well as for the towns? It, you know, it it might. I mean, I, ideally, you, you want to the, where the services provided have that community pay for it. But um, we would try to limit that to some extent, or as much as possible. You know, well, theoretically speaking, <laughs> Richmond. Bowden and Bowden hand probably don't want to be paying for a shelf right. you know. They have some there, don't they? <laughs> the, the federal government pays the rings. We know we have a boat rate, we have a officer rate, we have a plane rate, you know, things, you know, this it's more than just the the at least for us, it's more than just the individual's, you know, rate of pay. There's actually other associated, you know, things that don't 
just going to say this should be a county budget item and next year's county budget process because these one or two officers could be used for all kinds of different other uses by the county as deputy sheriffs not just shellfish wardens so uh, this should be approached in my mind as the county adding on a deputy sheriff marine warden these five towns spend a lot of money right now for wardens and that could be easily put towards us with the county to fund this. But the county should be in, involved financially in funding this program. And I'll speak to the commissions about this as well. I think they all can. Um, the, the other question that, that continually comes to my mind is um, when the state licenses people to go dig in another town's flats. I don't, I just don't understand why the state is not responsible. And I know it's all about the law, but it seems to me that there should be a legislative solution that gives this, the uh, State Department of Marine Resources some responsibility for enforcing local laws. I mean, the, the, the extreme low watermark is same law for every town, and it's pretty apparent where that is in West Bath. So it, it doesn't make any sense to me that the licensing um, board isn't responsible for enforcement. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And just, just so you're clear, the, the state issue for the purposes of these folks um, issue issues commercial uh, shellfish licenses and that that's not a limit as far as the state's concerned it's not a limited entry fishery so anybody any citizen of the state of Maine could buy a state of Maine commercial shellfish license and um, folks that uh, you have to have that to, to take or uh, take greater than a pack of shellfish or sell any quantity of shellfish and uh, all of our licenses are statewide licenses unless there's some zone, you know, you know, some other regulation or whatnot. So, um, and, the, you know, many, many, many years ago, the state um, allowed towns to regulate shellfish within their own municipalities, you know, long before, long before my time, decades ago. And what, one thing to understand about the legislation at that time is when uh, when that happened, really about the only thing that was in play was soft shell players, uh, coal hogs and oysters and things like that. Really wasn't the main focus when that law was created. And I, perhaps one could argue that the law has not kept up with what's actually going on out there now uh, with uh, the coal hog harvesting and oyster harvesting and things like that. So, um, But also to your point about the low watermark, that is not crystal clear. That is uh, to have a municipal shellfish warden. For, you know, it's, if someone's standing on the mud, clearly they're, they're in the intertidal zone. But um, when, there's, when there's water on the flat, that, no one's been out there to paint a white line where, where this is. And um, you, you have another problem in West Bath with where the, with where your low water mark is delineated on the So um, how, do, how do we get that? If, oh boy, if, the I problem, if the problem is with yeah. the charts, that, yes, then we all right. know where the whole water mark right, is right. because we see it every day. Right. right. No, I, I agree with you, but it's, it's indisputable that the chart says something different. No. And that's a U.S. geological. I mean, you could, that's a. Well, who, yeah. who do we who do we talk to about that? Because that if that's what the root of part of the problem is, it's, the big I, piece of the right. problem, it right. needs to be fixed. Right. It's an, if it's an error. 
that keeps us from being able to um, have our laws enforced, the error needs to be fixed. And, and it's not just in, in West Bath. That's a, that's a difficult proposition for any municipal shellfish board to be able to prove either by preponderance or evidence or, or beyond a reasonable doubt, depending on whether it's a civil or criminal violation, where that person was. It's intentional, you know, it's made that way to, to uh, provide benefit to the acute, so to speak, that's, the, that's the, the standard that we operate on, so. Um, but your chart problem in West Bath is probably uh, a situation, it's a federal problem, so uh, perhaps you should contact your Senator Collins or your representative or whatnot to, to you know, it'll be a, U.S. Geological Survey. No, not anymore. Maine has a GIS group. They can do a match. They can keep, up, keep them up to date as the tide says the landscape change. Chasing the feds, those charts were wrong in 1950 and they were wrong in 1940 and it ain't going to happen. Uh, but we, Maine has a GIS who can do that. If you want to make it a state back function, then with the state license, you can back into it because the town ordinances are conservation ordinances. If the state puts in wording that part of that license is maintaining following conservation rules, you can back into it as a state. Right? <laughs> I'm writing it down right now. <laughs>
It's my understanding that it works all right in, in those communities. I was on the, uh, I called the uh, uh, Chief Deputy Rand Maker today and um, uh, talked with him um, about their experience and any issues that they've had. And it, it seems to work all right. Um, so they cracked up a boat. We won't do that. We'll leave the boat out here. Right? So, yeah. So the towns in Saginaw, Saginaw Harbor, Saginaw Harbor, Saginaw Harbor, Rich coastal towns. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, while we have Joel and Clint here, could we maybe open it up to general enforcement questions if anybody has anything that they'd like to talk about? Are you guys? So, I guess we have, I, I, I know there's a Sabino question. Yeah. We've got some folks here from Sabino. Um, we had a, um, a situation where some land was um, changed, altered from uh, where it should have been some rock to make the landing wider. Um, how was that enforced? That's a DEP thing. Yeah. Um, that's, that wouldn't be a real resource violation or anything like that. I, I understand that you folks do made some attempt to contact DEP about that. Um, yeah, they did respond. They did or did not? Yeah, they finally responded. And Jonathan met with a representative from DEP today. So I'll get an update from him about that situation. And I did mention it to Clint when I talked to him right. last week. Yeah. Did you go down and... I did, yeah, yeah. And um, it didn't appear to me to be anything obscene or anything like you know but um, it was probably a week or so after you know uh, like I said I, I that's a DEP thing so I, you know we kind of respond to those things and forward them emails or photos from time to time on things but that's we give them a whole ride but that's about it. Uh, our only involvement in something like that would be if it was a matter of trespass I guess I have a follow-up question on that because I had a resident call this week uh, saying that a harvester came by boat to the waterfront in front of their property and was looking for clarification on at what point that becomes trespassing and so, if it does become trespassing, who to contact for that? So that, that person was forward. I handled that complaint. Okay. And I, that, that landowner um, sounded like he was new to the area and I told him about how folks could, um, the old language from when we were in Massachusetts, fish father navigate in the intertidal zone yeah. and so on, you know, we, that they couldn't harvest seaweed because seaweed's not a fish, you know, so we, I went through that with that, with that president and it seemed to me like his real concern was just the, um, it sounded, sounded like they had some lines coming from the shore to their, to the end of their dock and he was concerned about that and I said, well, geez, you know, no plan that he wants to get wrapped up in that anyway. So um, I think that was pretty much pretty much smoothed over. But whether he liked what the law is or not, that's that's a different story. But that is the way it is. These are nicer to realtors, but to people know before they bought the place, the hell is lost. Yeah, they only show it at high time. <laughs> you know, it would save me a lot. We've had the same issue with uh, we've had the same issue with duck hunters in front of you know outside the safety zone, but in front of someone's house on a mud flat, and that's that's fouling. So that's you know permitted. Um, you know, uh, sunbathing, having a picnic, you know that would be not meet any of those those things. But uh, clam digging and digging digging worms certainly. Another sort of thing that you folks should understand about municipal shellfish wardens and their and their capabilities. You know, most of these people, you know, work in a work in a town for you know 10, 12, 15 hours a week or whatnot. And um, 
years ago when these ordinances were made, you know, a shelfers wouldn't work around low tide, you know, a couple hours either side of the water. And that is really not the situation anymore if you're going to ask them to, you know, do, uh, you know, whole hog harvesting, oyster harvesting, and, and things like that. So, um, it's, it's, like I said, it's not that four hours around that low water period. And then another thing you have to understand, you know, most of these folks don't have the resources that I, you know, they don't have night vision, they don't have a whole division of marine patrol officers, they don't have a aircraft that, that, uh, that all I have to do is get on the phone to get and, you know, air bubbles, you know, these things like that. So, you know, there is certain limitations to what, what these, these folks have, so. Um, but, but, but to that extent, should certainly, if there was an identified problem, we would reach out to our state law enforcement partners right. and, yep. and neighbors. And, Try to come up with it, okay. and we're more than willing to more than willing to help out. Right. So the, the guidelines are stipulated by each town ordinance. Whether you can clam on Sunday, whether you can clam after hours, so that really comes down to each town's ordinance. As I understand it, yes. Yeah. And that's how that is then enforced. Yep. So if there's something outside of that element, then what's the proper procedure for that? Well, it, it, it doesn't matter. What well, that something like that. is, if it, if it's uh, if it's a, a borders on a, a criminal offense, someone threatening someone or something like that, we would deal with that the same way we would deal with it if it was that, you know, any place. And, and we and we do too. Sometimes sometimes we get those complaints, and sometimes the sheriff's department gets those right. complaints. Whether you know yeah. theft complaints, vandalism complaints, those kinds of things. We would, uh, and and trespass. The, the, uh, the other thing it would be the enforcement of like closed flats. If you ever had, uh, you know, an area that was closed, so uh, those are mostly state those violations. Those would be state violations. Yeah. We would have, you know. But uh, one of the advantages of the sheriff's department, uh, a sheriff's deputy can enforce all the state laws too. Um, you know, the only the only restrictions that. Um, Sheriff's deputy has as far as marine resource block, they can't haul officer traps and um, they can't, um, like all you folks have commercial licenses, have a consent to inspection for me. It's kind of, kind of like a uh, uh, tractor trailer in the state police. It's you know, sort of yeah. the same idea. You know, those, those are the two exceptions. So, so the flight consent. But I think probably all the town ordinances have a consent to inspection written in there for them. So, I mean, what's that? There's a fairly detailed uh, ordinance. Uh, I have a copy of it here. So I, I had some written comments from the property owner at Close Reach. Um, I don't know if you want me to read them verbatim or just give you some the synopsis of their. Where did you say it was from? Close Reach. Close Reach is just right next to the town. That's a total town. I mean, that's even more of your town issue. 
And then you have shellfish going into it. So. And parking on the beach falls in that hole. Yeah, no. So well, that, that, it's addressing parking in the ways. So um, <coughs> the only person that I've seen parked on the beach there was a duck hunter a couple years ago. And I, when I called him, the water was already up to the <laughs> bottom of his truck. Okay, so to, if, if there was a tremendous amount of parking on that beach, we would all know about it because there, there would be cars there. Okay, um, so that's you know uh, there is certainly parking on that beach while harvesters are out digging clams. But any any reasonable harvester is back to that landing long before that vehicle is any anywhere near the water. So. So again, parking, I mean, I just go out on a limb here, but that's, that's one of these ones that the sheriff's department's not going to be involved with these, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think we've, we've been down that road before. Right. Um, yeah. And we are having our town attorney review our parking ordinance right now to see if it's enforceable or how enforceable it might be. What's so the other thing? thing is, including the permit um, parking permits were right, able to be given down there, so it, Sounds like there's a lot of work on And the concerns about people um, harvesting at 345 in the morning, that would be something that would be addressed in our ordinance, correct? And does it is there a timeline? I don't I'm not sure what the ordinance. Is there a timeline stated in the ordinance? Uh this, there is no night digging. There you go. There no allowed or mentioned. I, I don't have it in front of the present. Yeah, there's the night. Night digging is not allowed. But 4 a.m., when it's daylight at 4 o'clock in the summertime, there's nothing against it. Yeah. Another, you know, it's not, it, that doesn't restrict uh, marine worm harvesting at, you know, all hours of the day and night, right? It could happen in, in West Bound because that's not a shellfish. So, you know, folks could be out there. Folks could be shellfish harvesting outside the, um, the uh, low water mark, too, which would not be a town uh, issue either. Not, Issue as far as your weapons is concerned. So, you know, the only the only thing that my understanding is, intertidal shellfish harvesting is prohibited in West Bath by virtue of your ordinance. That bad, you know. That's that, correct. Right. This gentleman. So, in Georgetown, I've dealt with the uh, driving board vehicle onto the flats, and I've dealt with the state and talked to them and everything. As long as you're not trespassing, which if you go down the town lane, you're not trespassing. You can park a vehicle out there as long as the tide's out. You don't have it then when the tide comes in because then it becomes a safe problem and that will be your problem. And it's unenforceable by even the town, even if you do have a warden, to be parked down there because it's not trespassing. The only the only wire I can think of off the top of my head is it's the unlawful operating all train vehicle in the inner tide as well. Which if it's a registered motor vehicle, it's not it's not an eight to eight, so so it's perfectly legal. That's how they did clamps in the back. Yeah. Exactly. Or even they do that. That's how they do that. That's how they do that. And besides, if you didn't do it, tell somebody that works during the day they can't go outside of fishing and park their boat and trail over there at night. That's what you guys are going to have to figure out. There's other residents. Most of them that like to use that landing too. Oh, what that resident sounded like is that she doesn't want anybody parking in here. Um, I don't think if you can't park it, how do you use the land? I mean, you have to park it if it would work. Yeah. Or to leave and go fishing. As far as the noise complaint, it's as long as you don't have any ordinance, any noise ordinance, and the situation nobody has around here because of the label base. So. Yeah, we don't have a noise ordinance. I think it's 10 o'clock at night. I thought there was. I believe all this land is crap is all about me parking down at the boat landing, but there's a lot of a lot of things that you did. I watched your meeting from last week. I've heard all the complaints. I've been parking down on that boat landing since the early nineties. I've never had an issue until last year when, and Clint will probably remember this, somebody called 911, said that I was blocking the land and they couldn't launch their docks. When I got down there, the people waved at me, they were pushing their docks down the river. You can launch two trucks beside it, we tried it today. 
when I'm parked down there that when people say I park there all night long, it's just not possible. I'm only out there four, five, six hours. When that tide is coming in, there's no way on my truck is there. Another thing, these people say that I'm blocking it. They want to launch a big boat. If you launch a big boat down in Sabino Land, when that tide is out, it's not happening because there's not enough water there. It's just, it's not going to happen. I can launch mine, I got an airboat. People don't like the noise. Forever, since John Cornish was there, we had a verbal agreement. I would idle out before 7 a.m. There's a lot of things I do. I idle around, anybody knows it, and they still complain. I put new exhaust on my boat, they still complain. You, there is 30 feet, I have pitches. We took measurements on either side to back a boat down that lane when my truck is parked. So I don't know what to tell them. It's below the mark. The DEP said today where I park is below the, the title mark. So the town can't do a damn thing about it. I get people yelling at me, screaming at me, threatening me. I'm getting pretty damn tired of it. If people don't like it, I'll start using my 18 wheel to launch my boat. I'm not a dick. I've been a nice guy for the last 20 something years. But what am I going to do? All I'm doing is going to work. People need to get over it. Well, things are going to get noisy. I'm not the only one to complain about. For, for years, I've, Jeff, Jeff basically has his own parking spot down there. He parks at the same spot <laughs> yeah, all the time. And I've never, never, ever seen it a problem. Matter of fact, probably a week or so, I was down there talking to him, and I made like a four-point turn to turn okay. it out. So break the side of the truck. Right. Yeah. So this is really um, couldn't even imagine it. We opened up to the last ordinance. Everybody from the all the towns that come to us back. But my point being, you know, in concerning this thing, I've, I've never seen Jeff's truck down there in any way, shape, or form causing any sort of problem. Well, no, he used to park the other way, too, you know, so. Yeah. And it, it wouldn't help, you know, if something by any far fetched chance made me park up top. That's definitely not going to help the parking situation. Add another truck and trailer up on top of that land. They don't like two trucks being parked up there. They're not going to like four. Okay, the other items that we have really talked about with the parking, this is mostly about parking. So it's just, I'll just make one comment um, that some of the concern that we've heard in the past is not addressed in this particular letter is that with the turning radius, when people are turning vehicles around, that you actually encroach on private property. <coughs> so I just wanted to mention that as an issue. Um, it, it, there's not much room down in the landing. So just something to consider. I think the guy that's driving the 18 wheel and probably managed to get his hand open and other that. And it's on side of town road, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. But I, the, the, yeah. a so landowner there has sort of changed sure an, an area where folks used to park their, you know, individual vehicles. And I, I have no idea who that is. Well, these are just items that I think will be discussed when the board is addressing the parking ordinance. And where's the town of White end, though? You know, when you come down to Sabino Lane, you go straight over the land and goes back. That might help where the town road is. So right away it's off. So, I'm sorry, where does the town, I didn't get the Where the town right away stops, down there at Sabina by the landing. I mean, if they, they can block it off, but we're kind of, we're either going to turn around somewhere else or we're going to back down from Sabina Hall. I've seen some of these guys backing up that ain't doing it every day. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. What was the last thing you said about 10 feet? Can you repeat that? Oh, the road. It's uh, 10 feet that you have for allowance, I believe, like in a car accident right now, if you're not liable for, say you take out a tree 10 feet within that 10 foot line, the insurance will cover it through the town, not through the landowner, and so on and so forth. The property actually still belongs to the town 10 feet off. Ronnie's, and Ronnie, you can't build for 20 feet off, so. Ronnie told me a month or so ago that the that the road right away is 40 feet. That's the boundary. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was able, that 
I was there when he pinned it that day, and he said there's a 40 foot width that so anybody wants to do. Uh, you can cut 40 feet out, out, and it'll come over into people's yards, and they, that's why they never did it. But he did say 40 feet. But that's still where the road goes. Before you get too carried away, a right of way is not what you think it is. Once you build one, a right of way, you, you, what you have is what you've got. It's, it's, right of way is not. Take a 40 foot right of way, you can't put a 40 foot road in. You can't use 40 feet of it. What you use is what you get. Sorry, folks, that's the truth. So, what's paved is the, what is all there is? That's a fact. And what has been used for ditches, cleared brush, but a road is what a road is 20 years ago. Because it's not legal. For 20 until it's been. It's in not possession. challenged in 20 years, it stays as is half the yes. It's a easement by check your grandfather roads because Georgetown actually had the town road and had the beach on Sagadog Bay, and they actually blocked off the path we had going through the beach, and the town had to push the fact that we own right to the beach to open up our path again. Because a landowner decided they didn't want to walk it down. It literally is a lot by lot question. Can't you take it by arbitration or whatever? That I mean, you, mean, you can sure. take it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can say they can't widen the highway or something. Town road, you get 10 feet on each side. It's a private road because we tried to do it on my road, and nobody wanted to give up the 10 feet, so it's still a private road. We, we were trying to make it a town road, so I mean, that's as far as I can see. Yeah, 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 that's the town road. That's the There's got to be a way to work together. Where everyone feels comfortable. Um, working together with the people down there for a long, long time. Say again, what? People have been working together down here for a long, long time. You know, you can't, I don't know what to tell you. What, what, I, think what we're trying to to, I think we're trying to get a meeting with the residents and the claiming folks and just to share what concerns are. Maybe when we come out of that, we've all set our agreements find a way to collaborate as a community path forward. You gotta give it a shot. I understand that, but it's our last few plot of land and, and we I've been parking there for 45 years and for them to try to take that we have we could put a land in the end of Mount Road, but for some reason the town agreed to not let people park there. We can actually put a land in the can't park there. I don't want to see this happen so I don't that's the last thing we want to land. I don't think we're trying to take a landing away. I think we're trying to find a way that everyone feels you're good and hurt, and, and we work together. It's, it, I, I don't think there's, it's just. Like I said, the park did 45 years. Jeff? Already. I, I watched that on that, your last selection meeting, and I don't know who the woman was that brought that up, and I, I thought it was a pretty good idea is to get the diggers and the residents together. Under a roof, I know they wanted sheriffs and everything there, but we're not bullies. We're 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 clan diggers, but we're not murderers. They said they'd feel safer if we had the sheriffs there. Yeah, more than just show the sheriffs. Oh yes, yeah. more than right from agriculture yeah. folks using that land. Yeah. They they have, oh. You have residents that live out on the islands that are using that land and whatnot. So I think it's just more than clan diggers. Oh, it's, it's the whole yeah. community. Right. Yeah. I mean, kayakers, you know, fishermen, right. everybody. Yeah. They need yeah. that land. People from out of town. Yeah. Uh, People that come out in the summer. It's public. Oh, yeah, we need most of them. The bathroom, I don't think it gets the 14th with two rock town properties. Yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. Good good Yeah, as it 
safe to say that with what the department is saying they'll come up with for an agreement everybody's good with on the short term and potentially all the towns could organize another meeting and try to discuss whether or not something longer term could be worked out between all the all the communities yeah i mean, I mean we'll, we'll probably buy some individual town meetings you know yeah, every town's going to have a different budget right. so that's definitely well, and if we're going to try and pursue the sagahawk county contribution on oh. behalf of the five towns that's going to take a little bit longer Absolutely. so, so short term which is what we're talking about is getting yeah. something to christine early next week something on a per diem basis yeah. just, so yeah, just to address today and then well we want it as soon as possible but obviously yeah. you know, there's, there's yeah. going to be yeah. individual towns having individual discussions but in the long term you got to all the towns to get together it might be a good idea counselor, yeah, so. yeah. and kim was here so yeah Right. Yeah. I think it's not right now, right? Kick it over now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Michael Williams, I have, I have a broader question for the sheriff, something off topic. You mentioned that your office is not allowed to enforce this particular town ordinance. Does that apply to all town ordinances? Yes. Okay. Unless they have an MUO. Yeah. Does that right? MUO? Unless you there's an MUO. Or if I understand Mr. Hennessy correctly, the, the sheriff is deputized as a town constable. Yeah, it may have to in the in the short term. Short term. Just to yeah. And it's what it is cover what, what, that, is, is, what is stipulated in the MUO, right? MOU. <laughs> um, is, is what's gonna allow us to enforce maybe something today versus it grows into something tomorrow. It's, it's it's a, it's a process. It's a process because right now we there's nothing in there to allow them to enforce. So that that it may morph into something that's different, but at least it's something to protect the flats and, and how they're utilized and who can actually use them as well. So by kind of follow up, you're suggesting that MOU could be expanded potentially to cover other ordinances, but initially the MOU would be specific. Right. I guess right now, you know, a generic question for law enforcement. Yeah. You can't enforce any of our ordinance, and yeah. not just waterfront planning, just anything. Yeah, it would have to be specific. Right. So that I mean that certainly helps an understanding of what we, yeah. other than a life-threatening situation. Oh yeah. On what they can assist with. Yeah, and, and, and understand. You know, again, we talk about process. The reason that, that creates a process in and of itself. For example, a violation. Uh, if there was a violation, there would have to be a, a, a summons issued. The, the summons would have to be based on an ordinance within this community. It would have to be prosecuted by the town, not the state. Uh, that's one of the exceptions to the ordinance. And the ordinance has been, the title 12 does give the district attorney dictates the district attorney prosecutes municipal shelters. Oh, it's shelter. probably the only one. Okay. It's probably the there only one is that the district attorney is actually yeah, responsible. Cause That's because they don't. Typically not the case. Right. right. But it's a, it's a special law in Title 12 that the sheriff wouldn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, but, but that's right. I guess my, my point is, you know, the, the reason for that is multifaceted. It's not uh, that they can't uh, enforce ordinances. Once they can, it, it, it then sets off a chain of other other responsibilities uh, potentially. So, uh, other parts of the ordinance, such as parking and road landing and stuff like that, if they want to add that to their enforcement, that's something they should do like now to get it in there. Well, so I, I, we I, have rules on our boat. Yeah, I would guess what, what I've seen is that uh, regarding the ordinance, it would be uh, whatever is covered by the West Bass Shellfish Ordinance. Just shellfish. Yeah. DMR has no interest in approving an ordinance that has anything to do with parking. <laughs> 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 
That's actually helpful to know. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's outside of our concern. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. We just got to make sure we don't wrap up too much right now because you want a, a short term solution and do, you can't throw everything at it. You gotta, we don't want to chase them away. That's a long term yeah. solution. Yeah. So let's just work with the short term. Let's just work with the short term solution now, and the other stuff can work out later on. But there's a benefit yeah. to the collaborative approach to certainly protect your turf, but also to protect the residents. That's the, kind of the collaboration where I'm trying to get us all on the same page as, as a community. Um, I think we could come up with something that's beneficial for everybody. Anybody else? Any questions?
I never was notified that we were reevaluating. I didn't get anything in the mail, which, fine, that's you know, no problem. But somebody says, take the pictures. But what gets me is when I call him out on it, I gotta, don't forget, I'm with the assessor. And off he goes. Okay? So I'm like, I'm gonna call the town hall. I've got a problem with this. And then I said, no, I'm gonna go out. And I talked to Ronnie Beals. He said, we should go to the select meeting. Julie said there's a select meeting tonight, so that's why I'm here. Now, I'm not saying he's going to do that. Let me back up a little bit. As I'm driving out to go to the town hall today, he's parked off to the side. Okay. I pull up beside him asking me. I said, were you hired by the town hall staff? Yep. I said, okay, thank you. And I got ready to drive off, and he said, you have a nice, nice effing day. Remember, I'm with the assessor. No problem. Now, what's the point that I'm getting at is 